wars, rumors of wars, fear, and birth pains. Hi, this is Emily Wickham, and it's so good to be back with you. It truly is one of the highlights of my week to spend this time with you, to share thoughts that God puts on my heart about Bible prophecy. For those of you who are new to my channel, I welcome you. I'm so glad you're here, and I pray that this message today will be exactly what the Holy Spirit wants to use in every viewer's life. That's my prayer. So God knows each of our needs. He knows the circumstances in each of our lives, and he speaks to us through his holy word. So I would like to share some verses with you from Matthew 24, and uh, you will recognize these verses because I think we hear them often when we talk about Bible prophecy. So let me share with you Matthew 24, starting at verse 6, and I'm going to read through verse 8. And you will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened, for those things must take place. But that is not yet the end. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and in various places there will be famines and earthquakes. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. I want to start by sharing a personal experience with you about, um, well, it wasn't even a week ago. It was just, I believe it was this past when, uh, no, past Tuesday morning, I woke early and I couldn't go back to sleep, so I was just scrolling through my feed on YouTube, and a headline caught my eye, and it said something about Russia threatening to shut off the electric power grid in the United States if the USA interferes with what's going on with Ukraine. And when I saw that headline, I became fearful. And I don't know what your trigger points are. Uh, you know, I think we can have different areas that we are fearful about. And I wish this wasn't the case for me, but reading that headline about the power grid being shut down struck fear within me because... The thought of losing electricity and uh, the ability to have running water and just these things that are so much a part of daily life, I don't even think about them. I just, you know, expect the water to turn on when I turn the faucet. I expect the lights to come on. I expect the heat to come on or the air conditioning if it's summertime. And the thought of having those items just suddenly taken out of my life brought fear into my mind and into my heart. Maybe it makes you fearful as well because I know that that really is a uh, possibility in the days we're living in. And so it got me thinking uh, about, um, I guess, Maybe a certain scripture came to my mind. I wish I had written it down at the moment because I'm not exactly sure at what point and which verse came to mind. But God has given me a real peace, even though my initial response was fear. Somewhere along the line, through his word, God has given me peace. And it has to do... I believe it was the passage in John 14, I think it was verse 1, where Jesus is telling his disciples, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And then also, if we look at verse 6 right here in Matthew 24, when Jesus says that you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, he said, see that you are not frightened. So Jesus followed up that initial statement saying, basically, do not fear. And isn't that a hope, a truth, uh, just a comfort to cling to? 
that no matter what happens in this world, Jesus says, do not be frightened. Do not fear. He is with us and he sees all that is going on. Nothing is an accident. Nothing slips past his notice and he's taking care of us. Things might get really tough for us. Things might get very uncomfortable. I don't know exactly what the future holds, but we can trust that the Lord is with us and he will not let us just slip through his hands. He's not uh, going to just leave us on our own. And that brings me so much peace and so much comfort. And I wanted to share that with you because fear is a very real emotion and it can strike us at inopportune moments and we live in very uncertain times. We live in prophetic times because I just see the different aspects of Bible prophecy. I've heard many people say they're just converging. The points are coming together. There are things happening simultaneously. In various places, there will be famines and earthquakes. And that is the case throughout the world. And especially like the earthquakes, we, we hear about those pretty regularly now. But even the famine aspect, even here in the United States, I have become accustomed to going to the grocery store and seeing empty shelves and not being able to find exactly what I'm looking for. And I've gotten used to it. And I think that's just probably going to increase. So I share all of that, maybe just to give a very human element to what the scripture is saying right here. Just that portion about wars and rumors of wars. We're seeing that in the headlines. There are multiple problems <laughs> between different nations and the United States included. There are just issues with other countries. How is it all going to play out? What's going to happen? We don't know, but we know that God is in control. And just a few thoughts about this passage in Matthew 24. I think it's important to point out that these were Jesus' disciples who were asking him this question. And in verse 3, let me read exactly what they, they ask. They say to Jesus, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming? and of the end of the age. Now, I believe they are talking about Jesus' second coming. That's what they're asking about because the disciples were looking ahead to Jesus' reign in Jerusalem and they were curious about when that was going to take place. And so when we read this passage, we need to keep that in mind that they are asking about the second coming. And I believe that's going to be at the end of the seven year tribulation period. If you have studied Bible prophecy at all, if, if that's an interest of yours, then uh, you will understand when, when I say it's my understanding, the rapture will occur before the seven year tribulation starts. And that means what we're reading about here, the wars and rumors of wars, the famines, the earthquakes, those are just the beginning of birth pains. The fact that we are hearing of wars and rumors of wars, the fact that we're hearing more about earthquakes and famines, the fact that those things are increasing indicates that the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is getting closer and closer and closer, which means the rapture of the church, of the bride of Christ, is getting closer and closer and closer. And the Lord is going to return for his bride and take us to be with him for all eternity. And when he comes at the second coming, we will be with him. So, Time is really nearing the end of all things, as the, the disciples were asking the Lord about. And so I want to give a strong encouragement today. Do not fear. 
Do not hear reports about wars and rumors of wars and the famines and the earthquakes. Do not hear those things and let fear settle in your heart. Jesus told us to not be frightened. We need to be obedient to him. We need to trust him. We need to keep our eyes on him. We need to know these things must happen, as Jesus said. His second coming is so close, meaning the rapture is even closer. I hope this message has indeed ministered to you, to the needs in your heart. I pray it has brought you comfort and uh, just a fresh perspective of these verses in Matthew 24. And again, I thank you for being here with me today. I also want to ask a favor of you. If this message has been meaningful to you, would you please share it with even just one person? Ask the Lord to bring one person to your mind who needs to hear this message and share it with them because God's word is living and active and he speaks to us through it. And there may be somebody in your life who needs to hear these words from the Lord. Do not be frightened. And so I just want to ask you to share this message and to come back next time for more truth from God's word and more talk about Bible prophecy. Until next time, this is Emily Wickham with Proclaiming Him to Women.